What up y'all, Jesse Warden here. Howie from my YouTube channel asked, what are the things that you had wished that you had ex invested your time into to become the experienced dev you are? Well, I'm definitely experienced, but that doesn't mean I'm good. <laughs> I came, I thought about his question a lot and I thought about what I would answer with. So I just picked five, five things that I had wished that knowing what I know now that I had spent more time starting off from day one. And a lot of these I still continue to spend time on. One of them I'd spend no time on. The first thing I I wished that I had spent way more time on starting from scratch from day one was Unix. While people joke about Fortran running 80% of the world or COBOL or whatever it is and Java running basically 80% of the enterprise with SOAP and WebSphere and all this other stuff, Unix makes it run. Unix is what we use to shuttle and make sure everything stays working, to move things around. And it basically just powers everything. I didn't even have to touch any of that until I got out of the Flash community for about 10 years, going into the Lua and JavaScript community and web community, they were huge on using command line for a variety of things. When infrastructure became as code, cloud services like Heroku and a Amazon AWS became the de facto way you deploy things. It was all through command line. If you really know what you're doing, you're trying to automate it, test it, debug it. And my inability to know the basics of Unix, you can even watch some of my old videos where I struggle to do sudo for everything because I don't know, you know, just the basics. So I really wish if I could go back in time, that I would invest a significant amount of time taking not just the basics of Unix, but integrating it more into my workflow as a natural extension rather than just weird thing. Now with Visual Studio Code, it's right there with me, always open. But when I started, I had no idea why I needed this archaic old 1970s style shell window. It just didn't make any sense. Now knowing what I know now, I was very wrong and wish I had spent more time. So that's Unix. The second thing I wish I had spent more time on is the Git command line. This is only recently because I had been doing source control and CVS and SVN for a huge amount of time and the command line with those is awful. The Git basically runs everything nowadays and Git is very complicated. Everyone has their own way of doing feature branches and trunk based development. So I really wish I had spent and continue to spend more time using Git on the command line. I seem to be the only person in the past 10 years who uses a, a GUI to run Git. Everyone else I know uses Git on the command line. That's one thing I really wish I had done, but given the fact that GitHub is so easy, Atlassian's only good product, Source Tree, is just so easy to manage Git with and do feature branches or adapt to whatever else, even resolve conflicts now. I don't even use Beyond Compare anymore. So I really wish I'd use Git command line just to do some of the basics of rewinding, like Git reset and things like that. The third thing I wish I'd spent more time of and become aware of was functional programming. It seems to me that a lot of my time spent OOP was good. It helped a lot for UI development, which it has a really good shine around wrapping state and encapsulation, sending messages, learning the design patterns. But functional programming is very, very deep and knowing what I know now, being very experienced, is still very difficult. It just seems very obvious the more I learn about it, the more mathematically sound. Like, I was not a kid who liked geometry at all, but I loved algebra because algebra made sense to me. It was factual. It wasn't this wishy-washy thing like geometry, whereas in algebraic code, like functional programming, you can prove that it works and it's very simple to write. And I just wish that I had learned about it sooner. I had gotten out of my bubble. Uh, I think a lot of programmers that I respected at the time had done that learn one language a year thing where you basically, or even a month, you basically spend all month learning Ruby or all next month learning Python. So you go through 10 languages, seven languages in a year just to get experience from them and learn what they do, why they do what they do, and maybe some techniques you can learn about why they do it and, and be, could be useful. Functional programming was never in those lists. And if it was, I didn't really understand like what the difference between imperative and declarative and functional and blah logic. So I just wish that I had learned about it sooner because I feel like I'd wasted a lot of time doing OOP and thinking it was the end all be all. And I was kind of done with programming. I didn't have something next to really focus my core skills on. It's one thing to go from like Ruby to Python, learn a new language, learn a new pro platform, go from back in the front end development. But it's another to completely change the way you code regardless of language. That's huge. I just wish I had spent more time on it, made it where. So it, it really has taught me that I need to be careful about thinking in this bubble. Even now that in the JavaScript community, which I'm in now is much larger than my former communities. Still, I need to be very careful group think. I need to constantly expand my horizons and just ask questions. The fourth thing was testing Basically, in the context of CSCD, I didn't know that testing and a series of quality gates can be go down the rabbit hole. TV context, I watched one of my directors formerly when I was at Accenture. He was a director of, I guess, CSCD. And what he did was he showed the 33 quality gates that he had in Jenkins. It started all the way from like Java's linting to the PMD where it checks dead code to unit test, to integration test, to functional test, to performance test. And it just went all the way 
And it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. And a lot of it had very little to do with actually deployment, like moving your code. It was just saying, does this code work? And I was just blown away. I didn't really know, because I've always felt like programming is about, you know, stretching your mind muscle to get your cognitive load. Like when I first started, 100 lines of code was really hard. I was, I was so proud of myself for writing outside of expert mode and flash where you point and click code, like very similar to Blockly. Expert mode was where you write code, like in an IDE. And I remember 100 lines was a big cognitive load for me. It was stretching my brain. And now, you know, thousands of lines, I'm fine. But I figured that was the way it was supposed to be. And you're just supposed to maintain state in your head, the cognitive load. Of, okay, if that variable is there, but I call this in this order than that. Like I thought that was how things are supposed to be. But having those tests verify that's true. And then if you change things, you feel confident because they have that nice test bed there. I didn't know that that was there. So I really wish that I had known about CSCD in the early days, continuous integration, continuous development, mainly the integration part about knowing that my code's good, knowing that my code is tested, and I feel confident on all the layers of it, and I understand the pros and cons of investing time there versus not. And lastly is basically powerlifting. I mean, there's many, many things that I didn't know you can only do when you're young, or they're just easier, right? So if I hurt, if I hurt myself when I was 16, like I would be fine, you know, in five minutes. Now I just, like Brian Regan says, I just live with that for the rest of your life, that pain. I, I think there's a lot of things, especially when I ran my business, that you would tie your life to your project. You would get so passionately involved in this this project or these series of projects or this client and it would be your life and it would be so elated to be on the highs of when you launch and the client likes something or the lows when your client wasn't paying you or they didn't like something or you tried three different ways and they hated them all or you went to an interview as a consultant and you really didn't like the client weren't meshing but you had to find a way to earn their trust all these things were emotional highs and lows and i found that sometimes a lot of these things like you'd invest months and they would just die. You'd, you'd build something for eight months and the project would never be used or deleted. And that's where the concept of eight out of 10 project, software projects fail and nine out of 10 are perceived as failures. Like that number is insane. And it's true. You, you invest your life in these projects and these side projects and they go nowhere. And you've put so much emotional investment in them when they're gone, like you're, you're empty, right? You've given everything of you. And so I found it's very, very important to have as much as I love programming and development, I found it's important to have something outside of that to invest in small goals, invest in things that you want to accomplish that have nothing to do with programming. Because if I can put investment in powerlifting, that's all in me. It's very like skateboarding. You're not competing against other people. You're competing against yourself. If you're doing an ollie, you're trying to do a kickflip or whatever trick it is, you're, you are trying to do that and teach yourself so you can feel good that you did that after 30 failures. Same thing with powerlifting or any other activity. It doesn't have to be sports related. I just wish that I, I had had more of those growing up uh, in my 20s. I developed something outside of work because I'm mean, so obsessed with programming. I was so excited and that's great. But once you tie that, if, if that goes away, like one, like JavaScript's hot right now. When it's not hot anymore, then what? Like is my, if my life is really tied to programming and I love it so much, what happens then? I've been in this long enough to know it's not a big deal. I don't really care. I have no great love of JavaScript. I will completely switch to the drop a hat in another language or another platform or whatever. Even if they say you're only DevOps now, right? Like my new job is all back in. I've been a front end developer for 15 years, but that could all go away. AI could, we could have some breakthrough and I'm no longer a coder. And that's okay because I have things outside of my programming life, which is my, I know weird but something that can make me happy beyond, you know, my, obviously my wife and kids, right? I have invested efforts and skills that are not tied to everything. So programming is not all that I am. And that's very, I, I wish I had known that in my 20s. So a lot of the hard times I went through with clients and projects that didn't go well and didn't release or, you know, clients paid me a lot of money, work hard, and they just never used it. That kind of stuff really bummed me out. And I feel like if I had, had things outside of it, so I wasn't a workaholic in life, you know, that would have been... Very, very important. So those are the five things. Knowing Unix, someday I'll learn Git command line instead of using a UI. Continuing, you know, knowing functional programming, it really freed me from the, the, the horrors of OOP, object-oriented programming. Testing within the CICD process and all the levels of testing your code and something outside of work to make sure that your work is not your whole being and that life is meaningful. And then if something at work goes bad, that's okay. You'll be okay. And that's not all that is to life. There's a lot of other things that make you important and that can make you happy and whole and make you awesome. So that's it. My name is Jesse Ward and I hope that helps. Those are the five things that I'd wish I had learned sooner or spent more time sooner in my career rather than now. <laughs> I hope that helps. If you got any other questions, hit me up in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope that helps.